Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming tonight. As, uh, can you guys hear me pretty good? Okay. I have a soft voice, but I'm going to try to speak a little bit louder. And uh, you guys know, some of you guys know that I was born in the northern part of India, which is the most darkest region of the unreached people of the gospel. So God literally plucked me out of a dark region where demon spirits have taken over this entire region of India, the dark, one of the darkest in the Middle East and the northern part of India, and plucked me out and delivered me from the hand of the enemy. Praise God for that. Yes. And so while I was, when I was born in India, I was raised believing in the gods of my culture. And these gods of my culture, I didn't ha really know and understand what it meant. I was in darkness. Because when we're in darkness, we, can't, we don't know the truth. When we're deceived, we don't know that we're deceived, right? We don't know. Deceived people don't know they're deceived until God comes in and opens their eyes and removes the veil and opens their understanding. So when I was born in, in that region, I would always pray to a God. And we had a prayer room, and this guru was on the wall in the prayer room, and there was this, this Bible, and it wasn't this Bible. It was another belief system, which is half Hindu and half Islam. It was a Sikh religion. So we know the strongholds of that religion and how demonic that they are, especially in these end times. So I would pray to this unknown God, and as I began, when I came to America, I began to have supernatural encounters. When I was a little girl, I was laying on, on my couch in the, in the basement of my house, and I felt this spirit, and this spirit touched me, and I thought that this spirit w was a, a human. And this spirit touched me, and it touched me in an ungodly way. And I woke up and I went into the kitchen and I asked my family, was anybody near me? Did anybody touch me? And they said, no, you were by yourself. And I'll tell you later what that was. So as I began to grow into my teenage years, I would have this ability to read people's minds. I would have this ability to tell fortunes and to tell the future. I wasn't a practicing witch, but I had this ability that I thought came from God. So I would have this, this ability to have dreams and tell people, hey, I had a dream about you and this is what happened. We see a lot of this stuff going on in the church. And so we have to discern, is this stuff coming from the devil or is it coming from God? And that's what I'm going to get into in these next four weeks, but we're going to talk a lot about this tonight. So I started having these encounters with demon spirits. These spirits would appear to me two and three at a time. And they would appear to me in white clothing, and I would see them as spirits. And they would all appear to me, and they would tell me that I was born for such a time as this. And we know that that feeds our ego. It feeds our pride. It feeds something that God wants away from us to humble ourselves, but I didn't know this unknown God. So these spirits would appear to me and make me feel like I was called for, for a purpose for this generation. So it would feed my ego, and then I started getting into horoscopes and astrology. And my first out-of-body experience was about between 14 and 15 years old. I was laying in my bed, and I felt I, I could make my body feel like it was leaving, my spirit leaving my body. And it was, as it was leaving my body, I felt it going higher and higher, and I really thought I was going to die. And I, I couldn't believe that I, was, I could actually do this. I couldn't believe that I had the ability to do all these things. I didn't know where it was coming from. So as my spirit was leaving my body, I had to bring it back because I thought, because you know when the spirit leaves the body, it's dead. But Satan has such a deception in the times that we live in that he thinks that he can make people astral travel and travel back and forth from heaven and all these things. These are visions that are given by the demons to make us feel like we are as God, knowing both good and evil. It goes all the way back to the garden. When, when the serpent came to Eve and said, surely God did not say, because he knows the day that you eat of it, you'll be like God, knowing both good and evil. So in our fallen nature, we have this desire to become like God. We have this, de this desire to know good and evil to have control over our lives. 
So anyways, getting back to my out-of-body experience, I, I was able to put my spirit back into my body. And I realized this is scary because the truth of the matter is the demonic realm is scary. And Satan comes as an angel of light and as ministers, as ministers of righteousness that he has assigned in churches this day. Satan's last day um, agenda is to go and to deceive the body of Christ. And this is how he's going to do it. He's going to give signs and wonders, lying signs, lying wonders, lying miracles, lying uh, experiences to deceive us even deeper into deception and into the occult and the New Age movement, which is white witchcraft. And there's really no such thing as just white witchcraft. As white witchcraft is black magic. But it's disguised under light and, and experience of goodness or God a godly experience, if that makes any sense. So as I begin to grow in these areas, the sins of my fathers and forefathers were passed down to me. That's how I was able to do these things because the Bible says that God's going to visit the, the sins of the fathers and forefathers down three and four generations. So I was able to encounter things happening to me and do these things because of my, my grandfather and, and my father and my great-grandfather. They were into all this stuff. And my grandfather, every time I'd see him, he'd read the palm, and he would tell me, this is your life, this is your life, man, this is what's happening. And we had books on witchcraft in our house, white witchcraft, so I would learn, because I didn't know of this unknown God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So as I was growing into my teen years, people would see this aura about me. So I would have an aura, and, and I call it an anointing. It's not the anointing of God, it's the anointing of demons, of demonic anointing. And a demonic anointing comes because God says that Lucifer, he, he was a great cherub that guarded the glory of God. He walked in the mist with God, the Bible says. And when he was cast down out of heaven, he was also a worship leader. He had timbrels. He was built. All these instruments were built into him. So he knew the ways of God. He knew the things of God. So when I would have these encounters, I would have this aura about me, this presence, and it would seem like light, but it was darkness. And how many new agers do we see now that have this them, have this peace, they have this gentleness about them, they have something about them that seems like light and, and God, but it's demonic, and it's a demonic light that Satan is bringing in in these end times. Jesus said they'll be seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. So now I'm going to have you watch my, my uh, testimony on the 700 Club. So this is a breakdown. You guys can now kind of relate to what I came up with. So here we go. Well, Yasmin Suri, I don't know what nation that is, but it's a pretty name, Yasmin Suri. You know what that is? I don't know. Is it Indian? I don't know. It sounds Indian. It could it be beautiful. Indonesian. I don't know. Uh, anyhow, the, uh, Yasmin was enchanted with the occult when she met a man who shared the same passion. Yasmin became even more obsessed until the very thing she loved the most nearly killed her. Yasmin Suri became a U.S. citizen in 2008. Since then, the Department of Homeland Security invites her to sing at their events. Yasmin was born in India to a Sikh family. They moved to America when she was a child. She didn't speak English, and unfortunately, because of her ethnicity, she was the brunt of cruel jokes from the other children. I felt a sense of loss of control of my life, and I wanted to have control of my life. So I thought the more that I could get spiritual experience 
the more I would be able to control my environment and the more I would be able to control people. So I started getting into horoscopes. I started studying about psychics and witchcraft. I would begin to have demons which I didn't know there were demons at the time, revealed themselves to me on a continual basis. And they would just speak to my spirit that I had been born for a purpose and that, for, and that purpose would be fulfilled. As an adult, Yasmin was engrossed in the occult. The experiences that I would have is I wouldn't be satisfied. It would just leave me just more empty. It didn't give me an answer. It gave me power and a, self, and a sense of control but there was no, no answer for me. She met a man who was involved in the occult. He took her deeper into witchcraft. I moved in with him and uh, we had an, uh, quite an intense connection when it came to spirit to spirit and having the occult draw us together. In our house we would have uh, crystals, uh, huge pictures of Ramses and Pharaoh all over. When her birthday rolled around, she asked a friend for a Shirley MacLaine book. Her friend was a Christian. So she gave me my present, and I opened it up, and it happened to be a Bible. So I said, oh, where's my book? <laughs> and she said, well, I wanted to show you uh, something in the Bible. And she opened it up to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9 through 14. And God says that those that consult with familiar spirits or wizard or enchanters or the, those that practice necromancy and a whole list of things. He said that those things are an abomination to God. And those scriptures jumped out at me from the Bible and they jumped off the pages and they actually went right through my spirit. And I was convicted of sin for the first time in my life. It seemed to Yasmin that everywhere she went, she met Christians. I would ask him questions like, how does this Jesus come inside of you? I mean, what does it mean that you mean a man, another man comes inside of you? What does this born again mean? What does save mean? So I would ask questions, and even though I didn't understand them, I would still learn. At home, her boyfriend became violent. Yasmin was also having vivid nightmares that kept her up at night. During this time, another Christian friend gave her a message. She said that the man that I was living with was going to kill me if I didn't leave and that the Spirit of the Lord told her that I must leave him immediately. When she spoke to me, I just started crying. It broke something in me. And I had, and I knew it was God, even though I didn't know God. So I, um, I packed all my bags, and I told my mom that I was moving to North Carolina. She moved in with her brother, who invited her to church. I walked into that church, and when the worship started, I began to weep and weep and weep uncontrollably during worship and singing songs. And I had no idea what was happening to me. And I felt how much God loved me and He didn't hate me for all the things that I was doing in my past and all the abominations that I was practicing and how much He wanted to reach out to me and be a father to me. After going to church for a while, she made a decision. And I looked up into heaven and I said, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I believe what people have said about you, that you're the Son of God, that you died on the cross for me and you died for my sins. I said, please forgive me and come inside of me and live in me and be the Lord and Savior of my life. The change was almost instantaneous. The next morning, all my bad dreams were gone. My torment was gone. Everything was gone. It was like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders, the weight of sin, the weight of deception and I felt like I was alive for the first time in my life. I had a big bonfire and I burned everything that I had, even the music, the books that I had, um, the objects that I had all over my walls, the pictures, the clothes, the jewelry. I had to break everything in my life and break those chains over my life. Yasmin's life was on a new path. It was really a pretty awesome walk with the Lord. Um, I was thankful to the Lord for just opening my eyes so I could see. Instead of teaching people about the New Age, the Lord had me um, telling people how dangerous the New Age is. She always loved to sing, and as she developed her voice, she knew it was a gift from God. Come to Jesus, come home. I love music because music is such a way that God speaks to our spirit. 
and God says that He inhabits the praises of His people. I see so many people, whether it's in the church or out of the church, that are so lonely and they're hurting and they're desperate. Jesus is the only one that can fill that void. The Lord really spared me from death, not just spiritual death, but physical death and emotional death. I could have lost my mind. I could have been internally separated from God. So I thank God for His mercy and His love that He loved me when I had nothing to offer Him. Yes, me and Suri, when I had nothing to offer Him, He loved me. God loves you. Okay, thank God for His mercy. Thank God for His power. Thank God for His blood. He is stronger than the devil. He is more powerful than Satan and all of his demons. Yes, he is. He delivers us. And so, uh, thank you so much for watching my testimony. And what I really want to emphasize on before I get into the teaching of the Kundalini, the counterfeit Holy Spirit in the end times, is that when God when he was reaching out for me before I got saved, the demons started getting darker. As I said, there were light before. They came in, came in as angels of light. I felt good. I felt peace. It was a counterfeit peace. I felt a, a sense of joy, but it was a counterfeit joy. I felt all these things inside of me, but I knew that I had demons inside of me. And I had demons because I was practicing chants and mantras, and I was having out-of-body experiences, and I gave my life the devil, I even knew what the devil was without even knowing the Bible. And I was, I gave my heart to the devil and he just took over. And, but he came in as an angel of light. So as God started placing Christians around me, they would tell me that all the stuff that I was doing was, was evil and it was an abomination to God. But I didn't get it, you know, and nobody gets it until the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can reach a life. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can come to a human being as the convictor, as somebody to open the eyes of the blind and open the ears of the deaf to show us that we are sinners that, are, that need a savior, right? So as I got closer to being saved, the started scaring me. They started driving me out of the house. I started having panic attacks. I would end up in the emergency room and 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 I was terrified with fear because Satan he brings fear he's a roaring lion he he brings fear to his prey and these demons were threatening to kill me and so I would be driven out of my house and I'd be in the emergency room and I knew that these demons wanted to kill me because I knew in the spirit that they saw the spirit coming after me because they see things we can't see the demons see things that we can't see. We can't see the supernatural realm. We know that the devil operates in the supernatural realm. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. Paul said, I knew a man in the body or out of the body. I cannot tell. But he was taken to the third heaven. The third heaven is the seat of God. And we know in the second heavens that there is warfare going on. We know that Satan came before, before God for Job. We know that a lying spirit came in the su supernatural realm in the second heaven before God to deceive the people. And we know that one day that the Lord is gonna cast, Michael the archangel is gonna cast that devil down. We know in the book of Revelation this is gonna happen. So we know that there is an atmosphere of warfare going on because you're in the book of Daniel, Daniel was praying for 21 days. And Gabriel, or Michael the archangel, came and he said to him that God answered your prayer the day that you prayed, but it took 21 days because he had to withstand the prince of Persia. He was fighting a demonic, something, a, a demon, a territorial spirit in the spiritual realm over that region. And he told Daniel that it took him 21 days, and when he goes and returns, He's going to take Michael the archangel with him. He needs help from Michael the archangel to withstand the prince of Greece and the prince of Persia. So there's warfare going on over our souls, over regions, over countries. And we know that Satan is out to destroy all of us that are made in God's image and his likeness, right? 
Okay. So, as I got closer to being saved, the demons got darker, and they wanted to kill me. And I remember sitting in my home at the time I was living with a guy. I was not living right. I was in sin. I was doing drugs. I was having sex outside of marriage. I was doing everything that sinners do. You know, we can't look down on sinners because sinners sin. That's what they're supposed to do. So I felt dead and empty inside. And you know when you're dead inside. You know when you're empty. You know that you're like a dead man walking, right? You know that feeling that you're dead. And I, I got on my knees in the very place that I was sinning. And I said, Lord, I believe that you're Jesus, the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins, that you were raised from the dead, and that you now sit at the right hand of God and you shed your blood for me. Come inside my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. He did that moment. I was saved. I, my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the next day when I drove around, I saw the trees were, were green, the sky was blue, the grass was green. I could see things that I never saw before. I was dead, but now I'm alive. Now I'm living for God. And six months later, I got radically filled with the Holy Spirit. I started cleaning up my life. I started destroying things that I knew were demonic in my house. Books, jewelry, music, clothes that I would wear to the bars. My alcohol went down the drain. And I'm not judging people that drink alcohol. I'm just saying drunkenness is a sin. There are some things I'm not going to argue about. But I'm just telling you that I had to clean up my life. I had to repent. And we never hear about repentance anymore. That God wants us to get rid of occultic things in our lives. Anything that has to do with serving other gods. So God gave me the scripture and we're going to start in our study right now. And I'm, I have another video for you guys to watch. And this is very serious video. Because this is what's happening in the churches worldwide. This is a counterfeit Holy Spirit. Deuteronomy 18. This is on your notes. Deuteronomy 18. God says, when you come into the land which the Lord God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls the dead. For all those who do these things are an abomination to God. Do you know what an abomination is? God hates these things. He hates people that practice such things. He said all those who do those things are an abomination to the Lord. He can't stand this stuff. He can't stand a cult and witchcraft into our lives. Even as Christians, this is so dangerous because this, we all know that we're in the last days. Do we not agree that we're in the last days? We are in the end times. We see Israel being surrounded. We see a hatred for, for Jews. We see a hatred for, for, uh, for morality. We have same-sex marriage. You know, we have abortion up until nine months. We see so much evil happening in our land. The Bible speaks again and again, warning us of deception seducing spirits in the end times perilous times will come the lord says he said there'll be lying signs and lying wonders the bible talks about being sober being vigilant he talks about sobriety he said be sober not drunk as you see this anointing this counterfeit anointing happening in these churches be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walks about the earth seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for you guys. He's searching for the Christian. He's looking for those, the remnant church. He's searching. The Bible says he's walking to and fro the earth. So he's looking for you guys. He's searching to destroy you, to devour you. This is not a game. That's why the Bible says that he, they, the, God says this to us, all these prophecies in the end times is warnings, warnings, warnings. We're in the end times right now. There's a movement that has infiltrated the church. It's promoting bizarre signs and wonders. 
A lot of people are getting involved in this movement. This is a kundalini spirit. This is kundalini spirit is brought about with yoga, with Eastern meditation, <laughs> with visualization, with acupuncture, and just so many things that um, are dangerous. In fact, in my book, I talk about not, and the kundalini spirit is your contemplative centering prayer. It's your Christian yoga. It's your soaking prayer. These movements from Eastern mysticism, from the sozo ministry, regressing back, going and making an image out of Jesus in your mind and conjuring up this Jesus. It's through, it's through meditation. It's through labyrinths now. You see with the big ministries, they're walking in labyrinths. They're walking, and, and I'll get into this in the four weeks. They're actually doing traveling in a lot of these churches having open portals or open heavens traveling back and forth from heaven back to earth meeting with the prophets meeting with the disciples and they're saying that the disciples are talking to them which is a form of necromancy contacting the dead there's also this kundalini counterfeit holy spirit comes through visualization when we visualize things the name and claim it that we can make things happen if we think it hard enough which uh, I, I think it's week two or three that I'll be getting into that. The gold dust, the glory clouds, the manifestations that are happening through this counterfeit Holy Spirit, and you're going to see a video on this stuff, uh, Christian mysticism, horoscopes, astrology. There's so many people that are looking at their horoscopes and astrology as a joke or as entertainment that is so dangerous. Psychics, so many people are going to psychics are these false prophets that are coming in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus' disciples asked him in Matthew 24, Jesus, what is the sign of your coming in the end of the age? And Jesus says to him, take heed that no man deceive you. He said, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and shall deceive many. That means people are coming in Jesus' name under the cloak of Christianity to bring you deeper into deception. This counterfeit spirit is also coming in through certain essential oils. I, know, I love essential oils. I have them in my home. But this is a big movement of essential oils that they call witches brew, or you can get peace or joy from essential oils. We know peace and joy only come from Jesus. They don't come from an oil. So I'm going to get into that too. Karma, reincarnation, which is yoga as well. Christ consciousness, anytime you hear somebody talking about consciousness or, or, or uh, uh, human consciousness or Christ consciousness, it's always a new age term. They're a holistic medicine that is very dangerous that people are dabbling in, and I'm going to get into that too, but this is a kundalini spirit, the kundalini awakening we're going to get into in a minute. Angels, what are these female angels? Is there such thing biblically as female angels? No, there's not. I'll break it down for you. Every time an angel appeared, unless it was a demonic spirit, all angels appeared in a male form in the Bible. But everyone's got female angels hanging around in their house and their gardens. And the Bible says if you bring in a cursed thing into your house, you'll become a curse like unto it. So the third eye, what is the kundalini awakening? We're going to talk about that tonight, the third eye. And, and why is yoga so dangerous? Hypnotism, why is hypnotism so dangerous? We're going to get into all this stuff in the next four weeks. And I'm excited because I think that we need this kind of stuff for such a time as this. And uh, so anyways, we have a movement promoting drunkenness. We are told to be sober in the end times again and again and again. It's promoting whacked out spiritual experiences in the churches. You see people having a kundalini awakening. You're gonna see a video on this. And this kundalini awakening or this counterfeit Holy Spirit looks exactly like what's happening in these churches worldwide in the biggest ministries that you see around. We are, in, we are warned in the Bible to watch out for seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. The Bible even says in Matthew that false Christ and false prophets will arise to show great signs and wonders, if possible, even to deceive, deceive the very elect of God. That means you and I. We're God's chosen vessels. That means, God, that means Satan's coming in 
And he's going to, in the King James Version, it says he's going to deceive the very elect of God. That's what it means in the original Greek translation. The elect are going to be deceived. And if anyone thinks that no, we can't be deceived, you're deceived already. Right? You're deceived already because we all need the power of God to keep us, our eyes open and alert and to know this word and how to test the spirits, which I will get into. So, you know, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to take any chances with deceiving spirits in the last days. What about you guys? I don't want to take any chances. I don't want to get deceived. You know, if it's weird and it looks like Hinduism, because this stuff looks like Hinduism, if you're going to watch a video in a minute, it looks like Hinduism from some Eastern religion. I don't want any part of it. Do you? I don't want any part of it. I don't want to miss the mark. I don't want to miss out on God. So this is exactly what the scripture warns us about. So we're going to, we're going to, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit through this, but you're going to see this kundalini awakening, this counterfeit Holy Spirit, and what it is. So go ahead and play the video, Pierre. Thank you. So you're going to see what's happening in the church, and you're also going to see what's happening in these Eastern religions. It's identical. You can turn it up. Now, the basic question that we're asking in this documentary is, why are these manifestations so similar to Eastern religions and Hinduism and the Kundalini cults, and yet they're not found in Scripture, they're not found in the Bible, they're not found in classical Christianity at all? <laughs> of course, in Hinduism, one of the most common ways of experiencing a kundalini awakening is through a guru placing his hand upon your forehead. This is called Shaktipat. And when they do that, you'll be infused with this incredible love and this wave of emotion. You'll fall down. There'll be all these manifestations, maybe animal noises, uh, joy and weeping and shaking. This is a kundalini awakening. And amazingly, it is exactly the same as what we have been seeing in the Toronto Blessing. Now, this is a guru that you see, and he's, going, he's making this woman have a kundalini awakening. And you see this in the church with pastors and these people laying hands on each other, and they're having a kundalini awakening, which is a counter to the Holy Spirit. So she's feeling this ecstasy. Things are happening in her body, and she thinks it's God, but it's actually a counterfeit demonic spirit that is entering her body to give her shaking all these things that we see happening in the charismatic churches around the world so she's experiencing this ecstasy and this peace and there she goes now here's now here she is again this is a guru and these are transferred by these people through the laying on of hands just like uh, of Acts, that they would lay their hands and they'd be the holy spirit this is a demonic spirit and kundalini spirits and they are transferred. You can see the same reactions as in the charismatic church that's happening. And this is yoga, Eastern meditation, visualization, the, the chakras that are going up through the spine. And I'm going to talk about the yoga poses and everything that happened. This is the, the church. This is the same manifestations you're seeing in the church. It's identical to the Holy Spirit as Hinduism. And this is the danger that we're facing in the end times. Satan has crept to the church. Now, one of the very clearest signs of a kundalini awakening has always been these kriyas. You see this woman involved in the New Age movement. She's walking along, exhibiting these kriyas happening, involuntary uh, jerking motions. And the staggering thing about it is that we are seeing again and again and again these exact same type of kriyas right through the Toronto movement. This has always been one of the clearest signs of Kundalini that we know of. A friend of mine from South Africa who's done a tremendous amount of research on this topic says that Kundalini is like a false Holy Spirit. It produces even miracles and healings and fusions of love and power and energy and emotion and uh, all these kinds of things and yet it's the Hindu version of the Holy Spirit and it's not holy.
So th this is a yoga pose, you guys. This has infiltrated the church worldwide. Churches are practicing holy yoga, Christian yoga, all types of yoga. And this has infiltrated these. I'll tell you what these poses are. These are paying homage to Hindu deities, and we will get into that as well. This opens up Kundalini, Count Holy Spirit's demonic In fact, possession. when you go to John Crowder's website, he openly advertises his mystical schools, where people can learn to operate in trances, raptures, ecstatic prayer, mysticism, spirit travel, and every other New Age sounding thing you can imagine. And yet Christian leaders all over the world are promoting these ministries. People are being deceived. Some of the shocking things and, and just how similar they are to the kundalini cults of hinduism and the new age movement eastern religion so i saw all of this incredibly alarming and disturbing stuff coming in uh, while i was involved called the fire tunnel you guys are going to hear about this fire tunnel where people are lined up on both sides and people are walking through this tunnel in the churches in these charismatic churches their hands laid on them and they're being imparted kundalini anointing as you can see their bodies are going to be shaking and they have the same manifestations as in hinduism there they go see the head jerking see the bodies jerking this is not the holy spirit and here we see it again the same type of impartation we have to test the spirits with the word of god this has taken a worldwide move. It's, a, it's infiltrated churches everywhere, you guys. So we see this counterfeit anointing is the same thing as we see in the charismatic churches with the head shaking. You're going to see this in a minute. In Pentecostal churches around the world, Baptist churches, it doesn't matter what denomination anymore. Harold, we were just getting ready to close, and the manna came again into Harold's hand. Now this see Harold's Kundalini and their angels you can see him in the church. If you want to just pan over and show, uh, <laughs> but uh, the manna just fell again, and uh, so oh it's on the floor, and it, it happened. Now these are the chakras, and we're going to talk about that. These are the levels of demonic entry through yoga, and I'm going to get really. It's going to be really. For you guys. We've already seen in the 1990s this bizarre new movement with drunkenness and animal noises falling down, jerking, and all of this spread around the world. They think Toronto something. Wait till they come to Boston. <laughs> again ministering alongside his new wife and the thing about the elephant it wasn't just an ordinary elephant it was a wild elephant a wild elephant as we've already seen these same spasmodic head movements in hinduism are taken as a sure sign of a kundalini awakening why then are we now seeing them in the church it is for everyone for every christian scary isn't it very scary. This is happening in churches worldwide with the biggest ministries that you hear on the radio and on television. And there are people that are blind leading the blind. And in the end times, this is exactly what's happening. Great deception has covered the earth. And we have to expose it. We have to warn the body of Christ. What is kundalini? Kundalini means coiled. Okay, that's what kundalini means, coiled. It's a yogi or yoga life force in the base of the spine. 
This force moves through chakras that you see in the base of the spine, and there are different levels, seven different chakras. It moves through the base of the spine, and it's a non-physical energy. It is a demonic energy, and I'll, I'll tell you how it gets through, through yoga. But I'm just kind of setting this up for you to tell what kundalini is. Kundalini is the mainstay of all yoga practices. The serpent power, and that's, and I'm wondering why in the world would Christians get involved in it? Either there's, they're either completely ignorant of what yoga is, or they're continuing to do it and they don't care. You know, God said in the end times that he would give us over to believe the lie to those that did not love the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God's gonna send a deluding spirit we are in those times right now, there's a great falling away from the faith. The Bible said this is what would happen in the end times. So Christians are not to partake in the deeds of darkness, but rather to expose them. Is that not right? We are to expose the works of darkness. And this is what we're doing tonight. We're exposing the works of darkness and you'll be able to share this with your friends. So you, we were once of darkness in Ephesians 5, 8. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of, of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Find out what pleases the Lord and have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. Why are we partaking in the occult? Hinduism and yoga cannot be separated from the occult. I'll get into this in a minute. So the manifestations of kundalini energy, what you just saw, comes through yoga. So there are people that are practicing this kundalini demonic power. It's, it's called cosmic life force, which is the demonic power. So according to yogis, you can't separate it. There's no way you can separate uh, yoga from, from uh, Christianity or, you know, people are getting involved in all this stuff. You can't separate it. How does somebody receive the counterfeit spirit? Okay. Yoga. That's how we receive it. Visualization. Meditation. Acupuncture. All those things that I told you. Centering prayer. Sozo ministry. Theophostics, labyrinths, dabbling in the occult, Ouija boards, astrology, mind control, anything that has to do with Eastern mysticism or the occult, you will get an opening to a demonic spirit. If you're a Christian, I don't believe you can be possessed by demons but you can be oppressed by demons because they work in the soul realm or in the psyche. That's where psychic, that's where psychic, the word psychic comes from, it means soul. So when you go to a prophet, you know, God warns us about prophets in the end times. Does he not false prophets? You go to churches and people are proselyting, not prophesying over people. Where, how do they know your name? How do they know where you live? How do they know your credit card number? How do you watch Christmas? They know all this stuff about you because demons communicate with each other. They have a realm that they operate in and they communicate and they've been watching you since you were a young child, since you were born. They can see your address. They can see your credit card number. They can see everything that you do. They could hear everything that you say. So they communicate it with each other and they tell these false prophets exactly what you're about and then they get into deeper deception in these churches because God is not about reading, sending his prophets to read somebody's uh, credit card or somebody's birth date or, 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 or fortune tell the future. The Bible says no man knows the future but God. Not even the prophets of God can foretell your future. If God says, no man knows the future but God, everybody wants a word from God, but God is sending lying spirits. These are lying spirits. He did that in the Old Testament. He's sending deluding spirits because we won't read the, the scripture, the word of God. Okay, 
Now, the next thing, okay, let's go, let's go to uh, the effects of this demonic spirit. So the effects of this kundalini spirit is uh, intense sensations of energy. You're going to feel, you see people running through the churches. You feel, you see people doing that kind of stuff, crazy stuff. I'm not saying you can't run to the churches and praise God. I'm just saying the manifestations are, these kundalini awakenings, they're bizarre. These people are screaming like that woman that was on fire. That's the fire of hell. That's not the fire of God. That's the fire of the hell, the pit of hell from demons tormenting her. That's torment. But people are seeing this as some great awakening, as a counterfeit. You'll, you'll feel electrical urges or, or electrical impulses. You see in these ministries where they lay hands on people and it's electricity going through them, just like these Shakti pots that like the gurus are putting on people and they're shaking. And it's the same exact Hindu spirit that has been released in, in Christianity and churches worldwide that are getting prayed over. And they're, and they're, they're shaking like kundalini and they're, they're feeling this electricity and you hear it and you guys know what I'm talking about without naming names, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. We think it's God, but if it has not happened to you, praise God because he's protecting you. There was a time that I thought I could not connect with or, or I, couldn't, I couldn't connect with this area of this Christianity of all these people hearing from God all the time and getting these manifestations or gold dust or drunk in the spirit or, or shaking uncontrollably. I thought I didn't love God enough. I thought I wasn't close to God enough. Why wasn't I getting what other Christians were getting? But God showed me, he was protecting me. He was protecting me, I love God. I wanted to test everything by the word. The Bible says test the spirits to know whether they're from God. So you're gonna get electrical impulses. You're gonna get heat moving through your arms and legs and up and down the spine, or sometimes you'll even feel it on your head. You're gonna get violent, you're gonna, you're gonna have violent and uh, spasmatic jerks on your body just like you saw in churches worldwide and in Hinduism. You're gonna get that as well. You're gonna have rush, you're gonna have like this rush of ecstatic joy you know, when the Bible talks about Jesus, he gives us joy, but it's not the same type of joy. In this Hinduism, in this counterfeit Holy Spirit, you're going to feel this ecstatic joy, and it's, you're, you're not going to be able to control yourself because the Bible says one of the, fruit of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. So when the Spirit moves on you, you will not be able to control your body. You will not be able to control the manifestations, whether it's violent screaming like you saw in the video, whether it's karate chopping in the air, whether it's making warrior stances, which are like yoga, whether it's making crazy animal noises like you saw that woman do, she was crowing like, she was crowing like, a, like a rooster, and some people bark like dogs, some people meow like cats. This happened in some of the revivals across the world. This is a kundalini counterfeit Holy Spirit awakening, and they, they have grotesque growls. Some of them are even, even gonna growl. And uh, some of them are going to have this crazy, uncontrollable laughter, which has been a movement in the last 20 years that has taken such a huge, brought us such a huge impact into the charismatic churches across the world. So the charismatic, so how is the counterfeit Holy Spirit spreading across the world? It's spreading across the world through, through pastors that are imposters. They're imposters. Does that make sense? Impostors. They're not true pastors because they're hirelings. This feeds on the ego. These are hirelings. These people are paid to do what they. Jesus said that the hireling comes, and, and when the wolf comes, the hireling runs, and, and the, the, the sheep are devoured. A true pastor is going to be a watchman on the wall. He's going to alert the body of Christ to danger when the wolf is coming in. The false shepherds, they run. They feed on building their churches. They feed on money. They feed on ego. They feed on big ministries. Just because a ministry is big does not mean God's stamp of approval is on it. Does that make sense? God's stamp of approval is on when a church is repenting and turning from their wicked ways and being humble and being used by God to reach the hungry, the hurting, the poor, the blind, the maimed, 
Do you get what I'm saying? These manifestations that are happening are feeding with gold dust. Gold dust is appearing on people. This is a kundalini manifestation. People are laying hands on each other. People are imparting the spirit through laying on of hands. They're imparting the spirit through sharing it with others and in prayer meetings. What is the agenda of this movement? This agenda is the last days what Jesus talks about, to deceive the world, to deceive the church. Satan does not care about the world. He's already got him, right? He wants to deceive the body of Christ because the body of Christ, God says that he's raising up people in the end times that, that will do exploits, right? They'll, they'll do great things. So he wants to stop whatever he can before it's too late. He knows his time is short. Okay, now my favorite part. What is yoga? Right? Yoga has infiltrated the hospitals. Yoga has infiltrated uh, the, um, every sphere of civilization. Yoga is union with God, the Hindu God. Yoga's instruction manual, if you get a manual on yoga, it's, it teaches to open the seven chakras. It also has a warning inside this manual that if you open the seven chakras, if you open the fifth one, you're going to go insane. This is in a yoga manual by yogis. What happens is when you hit the fifth chakra, and that's through yoga poses, which is behind your neck, you start speaking with demonic tongues. I've heard demons speak with tongues. I've heard Christians speak with tongues that are not of the Lord, okay? You're going to get strange. You're going to get a kundalini spirit. And a lot of this kundalini spirit causes curvature or scoliosis of the spine. You get health ailments. ailments. Yoga is also part of Pilates, P90X. They bring yoga too into the things that they do. Right? So we know in 1 Corinthians 10 20, the Bible says, No, but the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not God, and I do not want you to participate with demons. We cannot share the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons, you guys. Devils don't care what you know, they will take advantage of what you don't know. The Bible says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You, all of us, were spirit beings. We're at a higher level than demons, right? And because of that, we generate spiritual power, right? Whether we're saved or unsaved. When we're not saved, we're dead into God, but when we're saved, we have the Holy Spirit in us, our spirit man, right? So the demons are like parasites. They want to draw from that power. They will, the demons will fool you and deceive you into taking positions, okay? Each yoga position is dedicated to a specific demon. When you assume that position, that yoga position that you saw in the videos, you are calling on that demon, and they come like a parasite and draw that power from you. They are going to infiltrate you. They will infiltrate your body. They will, you have given them legal entryway. Demons work through legalities, okay? Satan works through legalities. That's why it's so dangerous to do these poses. These are demonic entryways to give Satan legal grounds. They don't care what you call it. Demons don't care if you call it Christian yoga, Hatha yoga, uh, holy yoga. It doesn't matter what they, they're looking for the positions that draw them. Every position in yoga is a prayer position to a different God or a different deity. That's what opens the chakras and that's uh, we'll get to your question at the end. That's what opens your body. Yes. Sure, Tai Chi is the same thing. That, those are positions. And so anytime you're making a spiritual position, you're also opening yourself up to demons coming. And, and also the chakras that you open up, these are inducing demons into your body to attack you, to infiltrate you. I know that not everybody gets demon-possessed through yoga, but a most... A, if you hear testimonies of people, a lot of people do. And through these, uh, through these exercises, uh, also the breathing, you allow the demons to possess you because that's what they're looking for, possession, right? That's what demons want to inhabit a body. 
And uh, people think that, hey, if my intentions are pure, if it's right, it makes it okay. That's not the truth. Jesus said you can worship him in vain. So you can attend to worship Jesus but still be in vain. Does that make sense? Our intentions doesn't mean that we're protected. So how do we worship in vain? By not doing what he commands and calling him Lord, Lord. Lord, look at all these things we did in your name. But he says, I never knew you because we don't keep his commandments. We can sing praises. We can raise our hands. It doesn't mean anything because he doesn't accept it. He wants pure worship because if we're not living in holiness and obedient to his, his command, commands, it doesn't matter what we do because he's seeking those to worship him in spirit and in truth. So uh, I'm going to close this up here in a minute. So um, how do we test the spirits? We test the spirits through the word of God. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this up real quick for you. 1 John 4, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to know whether they're from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you heard was coming and is now in the world already. Okay, so how do we test the spirits? In the beginning, in the book of John, was the Word. The Word is Jesus. The Word was with God, Jesus. The Word was God, Jesus. He, he, the Word became flesh, Jesus. And he manifested in the flesh. And, and John says, we beheld his glory, the only begotten Son of God. This is God's Word right here. Anything if you take, take anything from it or add anything to it, God says he's going to add to the plagues in the book of Revelation to you. So if it's not in the word, it's not of God. Does that make sense? So if you have a manifestation that's happening, if you have some kind of uh, something happening, gold that's appearing, or, or you're laughing uncontrollably, or, or you're drunk and flailing around, or you know, you're, you're jerking and all this stuff. This, the Bible says be sober, not uncontrolled. So if you're having this stuff happen to you, where did it happen in the word? Never, 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 never. Nobody can convince me. That is the spirit of antichrist. This is already at work in the church, spirit of antichrist. You got them all around you. You got them sitting in your pews. You got them behind the pulpits. You got Antichrist spirits everywhere. They are set on assignment to deceive the body of God's very elect in these end times, right? We test the spirit by the word of God. Christian yoga is no different. Like I said, if you add a name to it, you can't separate Hinduism and yoga. It is impossible to separate Hinduism and yoga. Even the yogis say this. You can't, right? So I'm going to ask questions in a minute. Uh, new age practices associated with yoga, what are they? I already explained them to you. Visualization, meditation, uh, certain types of breathing, all breathing exercises actually. Uh, visualization, uh, contemplative prayer, soul zone ministry, phosphatics. This goes on and on. I apologize, it's in my book out there. You guys can uh, find that. We're running out of time for questions and answers, so I'm going through it. So. Can we separate the postures and stretches from yoga, which is rooted in Hinduism? Obviously not, because guess what? All those postures are named after animals, and that's why you're seeing all these people bark like dogs, meow like cats, do the rooster thing. All these are rooted in Hinduism. You know, the monkey, the pigeon, the star, the warrior, all these stances that you see are are, are homages to Hindu deities. That's what the demons are looking for. You can't separate this. Does that make sense? Am I making sense to you guys? When people say that word namaste, how much do you hear it on the commercials? You see it with your friends saying it. Don't ever accept that. You know what that means? It means I bow to the God within you. I bow to the God within you. That's what namaste means. When people are going like this, don't say it back to them because you know what that means. 
Or sometimes it means the spirit within me salutes the God within you. The God within me salutes the God within you. This is new age, right? So there is no yoga without Hinduism and no Hinduism without yoga. The country of origin of yoga is from India, my home country, where many, it has been a part of their lifestyle to worship their thousands and thousands of gods over there. And so, you know, Deuteronomy 12, and I'm going to close on this quickly. Deuteronomy 12, says, take, care, take care that you be not ensnared to follow them after they have been destroyed before you, and you do not inquire about their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods, that I may also do the same. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way for every abominable thing that the Lord hates, they have done for their gods. So God bless you. I want a time of fellowship with you guys. Thank you so much for coming tonight. My books are out there. Thank you, Pastor Bob, and thank you, Pastor Brooks, for having me. I, I give you honor, and uh, thank you. And, and if you guys have any questions, feel free.